Now, from WNYA, by four, and presented by ADK Tex. This is Albany Empire Express. And hi again, everybody. I'm Roger Wyland. Welcome to another edition of Albany Empire Express. And after completing the third largest comeback in AFL history, and we'll get to that, the uh, Empire back home this afternoon against Atlantic City. It's a 3.30 kick. Block party starts at 12.30, and you can watch the game right here on My4 if you're not heading downtown. Now, last Saturday, the Albany Empire entered with a 6-1 and one record. A win would clinch a playoff spot. They're down by the Valor by as many as 27. Seven points in the first half, 20 at the break. Now in the third, Tommy Grady throws one of his six touchdowns to offensive lineman Mo Ruffins as 41-35. Now inside a minute to go in the fourth, and the Valor go for it on fourth and goal, leading by six. That's exactly what the Empire needed to pick off of the end zone by Brad Muhammad. And there's enough time for Grady to find Quinton Sims for a fourth TD between the two and the Empire. Pull off the third largest comeback in Arena Football League history to clinch a playoff spot 56 55 over the valor well, obviously we were, we were down by quite a bit and uh you know i think the biggest thing was everyone's kind of stuck together uh, we played together and uh we found a way to win at the end scoring before half and then scoring first you know was a big jump but i mean they kept playing with us the whole time so i mean we just really had to keep battling it wasn't until you know 15 seconds left where we really actually took the lead so it was really big and Coach Keefe, as always, joins us. Good to see you, Coach. Yes, sir. Good to see You've you. You've been down before and even been down at halftime before, but not by that many. Uh, never by that. I mean, that's the largest comeback that I've ever obviously witnessed in, in my time as a coach and any team that I've coached. But uh, amazing job by the players. Everyone stuck together. I mean, looked adversity in the face and, and conquered that battle. It was incredible. Uh, and at halftime, what was your what was your what was your temperament? Yeah, I'll keep it PG for everyone out there, right? <laughs> so, uh, no, we were upset. I mean, I, I equate it to this. Uh, imagine someone that you care about very, very much. Uh, unfortunately, was in a dog fight, but we weren't fighting back, and that was the toughest thing. That I just felt helpless for the guys. Uh, you know, 34 to seven. Uh, that that's a really tough scenario uh, to be in. But you know, with that being said, the guys fought back. We went on a 49 to 21 point run. Uh, you know, what an awesome job by the guys to come back. And it clinches a playoff spot. I don't think there was any doubt you're going to make the playoffs, but it clinches. Yeah, and it feels good. I mean, in, in that fashion, to clinch the playoffs, you're exactly right. We feel like we are destined to be in the playoffs anyway. Uh, our goal is to be the number one seed, but it feels good to do it in that fashion, to win by one point with a, with a big-time victory that way. And welcome back. I'm Roger Wyland, the Albany Empire Express here on My4, presented by ADK Tex. This past Sunday on Father's Day marked four years since a terrible accident that nearly killed Empire defensive lineman Harold Brantley. Our Ashley Miller sat down with Brantley to talk about that day and how it changed his life. The next thing I knew, I was perpendicular with the road sliding down the highway, and I turned the wheel left and right, and you know, nothing's catching, and I can't regain control. Then Missouri football player Harold Brantley and his girlfriend Maddie Stock were on their way to lunch on a rainy Sunday afternoon when he lost control of his car on a wet Missouri highway. She was screaming my name. I thought I was conscious the whole time, but apparently I was knocked out, um, hanging upside down. My leg was pinned in between the door and my seat. The fire station had to come and cut me out of the car with the jaws of life. Harold's injuries were serious. They landed him in the hospital for three weeks and another week in rehab. A broken tibia and fibula. I tore everything on the left side of my knee. Broke six ribs, punctured both my lungs, punctured my stomach, um, fractured a couple places in my spine, tore everything in the right side of my neck. Um, had a concussion. Neither of them were wearing seat belts, but Maddie's injuries were much less severe. A concussion and a black eye. She pulled her knees into her chest and said, uh, God protect me. Harold says he was always a religious man, but that the accident made him a more spiritual man. To see firsthand uh, what my opinion is some type of unexplainable miracle um, directly after someone calling on the Lord's name or whoever your higher power may be was just amazing and really blew me away. It had some extra weight to it because she is the love of my life and if I were to be responsible for her getting injured seriously, especially to the extent that I was injured, I, th I don't know if I'd be able to shake that to this day. Maddie stuck with him, helping to nurse Harold back to health and they're still together after seven years of dating. 
And just seeing how she was always there for me and just relentlessly loving on me and looking after me, you know, um, you, you can't find that everywhere. And that type of loyalty is special. Seven years later, mm -hmm. you just said you're still <laughs> together. You call oh, her yeah. the love of your life. Oh, yeah. You guys are having a baby. You're having a baby girl. Oh, yeah. We were talking to Timo, <laughs> having a boy. You're having a girl. Are you ready oh, for man. what this is going to bring? She's going to be my little princess. And I've always been a softie. You know, on the field, you're a beast. And then once you get off the field, you're just loving. And... It's crazy because as much as I told you I love my girlfriend, the baby's not even here yet, and I already love her so much and want so much for her. It's just something I've never experienced, yeah. But we couldn't be more excited. For years on Father's Day, Harold was reminded of that accident. Next year, he'll make new happy memories, able to celebrate as a first-time dad. From going to almost losing my life to creating life and uh, bringing it into the world, it's just amazing. It's so much easier to keep things in perspective and know how blessed I am. Thank you, uh, Ashley. Great story and a really incredible story. And Coach Keith, this is a guy who people were talking about being a first or second round pick in the NFL draft. Yeah, I was getting emotional myself just watching that. Uh, Harold's an unbelievable person. But yeah, the uh, Missouri, uh, University of Missouri, a uh, first round draft pick projected, mm -hmm. had the accident. Uh, unfortunately, lost 100 pounds because of that. Found himself in Northwest Missouri State. And arena football is a lot of second chances. Yeah. And they're not always bad second chances. I mean, this is a, a true second chance for a body that obviously was crushed at one point. And now to see him get back on his feet and, and dominate the defensive line the way he is this year, it's, it's awesome to see. Yeah, he's a heck of a football player. Absolutely. And, uh, great story by Ashley. Ashley Miller there. I'm Roger Weiland. Welcome back to Albany Empire Express. Every week on the Miked Up segment, uh, one player always trying to, to one-up the other, right? Meaning that this has become a very competitive segment. This week, linebacker Terrence Moore gets his chance. And now, Albany Empire Express Miked Up. Oh, okay. You Miked Up, huh? Let the, let the P man get some good work in, man. Yeah. Go out there, try to, try to win every rip. What happened? He going for a run. It took over with it. I already won the championship. Come on, Thomas. On the trip and everything. Oh, I never ran it. You cheating, man. I hate Tommy. Hey, y'all throwing a ball over my head. Because he's tall, so his release point is high. Let's go out there and do our thing. We gotta go to compete, man. You know what I'm saying? What happened? What happened? I got the mic. I'm trying to get this on film. Why are you so offensive minded? I ain't never cheering for us, man. I like challenges. Oh, come on! Come on! Keep challenging me, man. That was a nice play. Keep challenging me. Our job is to stop y'all. Get in the way, get in the way. Go say he wanna see us finish more plays in practice. Good talk, good talk, good talk. Good talk, good talk. You know what I just realized? Young man. That's a known fact. You don't win manager of the year from not being the man. And Tommy is so close to being the GOAT. He's one letter away from being the GOAT. Grady, Brady. Tom, just now realizing Grady. That. One letter and five rings. That's the line. Look what seven yards at. Keep talking. If you had nine, he can't throw it because he's trying to throw it like right there. Just keep talking. Keep communicating. Playmakers on three. One, two, three. Playmakers. Ah, oh, ooh. Yeah, good job by Timo. And you ever hear what they're talking about at all? Do you know what's going on? I, I don't know what's going on until I come on this show. I, I feel like, but I, I tell you what, they're so focused. I mean, they love each other so much. I mean, that's the reigning defensive player of the year. He's doing such a great job for us. He is a true captain. He's the guy actually that calls the coin toss. For those who don't know, he's the one that says, hey, we want to receive the ball. We want to kick, you know, heads or tails. I just have the utmost faith in him. He, he's a true professional. Welcome back to the Albany Empire Express here on My 4, presented by ADK Tex. We've talked all season long about the depth and the talent of this wide receiving core from Jones to Sims to Taylor to Coney, but there's a new addition to that group, and nobody on this team has a higher catch-to-touchdown ratio than the guy who joins us here today, and that is Mo Ruffin's Albany Empire wide receiver. Hey, you like hey. the sound of that? I mean, I'll take it. I'll take it. I know I do it. Some other things, but yeah, eventually I'll get a catch or two, so I'll take that. Most one of the best offensive linemen in the AFL, but he caught a touchdown last week, as you saw in the highlight, and that was a nice move, man. T take me through that. <clears throat> Did you think the ball would come your way when the play was called, and then you've got a defender on you, you right. shed that guy, and boom, all of a sudden you're wide open. Right, yeah. Mike, Mike is the first option. Benson's the first option on that play. Obviously, you know, those are the two routes on the play, um, but like I said, he's the first option. And with me, as soon as I went out on my route, the DN stayed with me. So I, I'm just like, I got to do whatever I got to do to get him off of me. 
And so I hit him with a quick swim move, and hopefully he was still turn around. I saw Tommy ball coming at me, so just had to make a play. And you know what I loved about that, too, was a lot of times, no, no matter what it is, and here's the play, the quarterback will loft it up, mm -hmm. just hoping that the old lineman will kind of like – Softly catch it. Right. That was a bullet from yeah. Tommy to you on yeah. the line. He put it on the rope, man. He's he's been my quarterback for a few years now. Obviously, when I was in Jacksonville, yeah. I've been playing here, and he's put a lot of them on the rope. So there's no touch passes. If he needs to get in there, it's a small window. He's not throwing it real soft. I gotta I gotta catch these hard passes from him. So I'm glad I got big enough hands to make it happen. <laughs> One last thing on that play, Mo. Is that something you lobbied for with Coach Moss, or did Coach Moss see something maybe with the defense that hey we can get we might be able yeah. to get Mo on the edge? Yeah, it's a play we've had in, and obviously playing um, you know playing against the, the defensive ends that Washington had, it's it's a little bit more pl uh, a play that could be ran and, yep. and could work. So. You know, just lucky you worked out for us. All right, let's talk about what you do best, and that's blocking, guys. Mm -hmm. That's protecting Tommy Grady. We've talked a lot about this offensive line, though, all season, too, about how you keep your quarterback clean. Grady's rarely hit, mm -hmm. certainly rarely sacked. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it about this front line that's, that makes you guys as good as you are? Uh, first off, it's a vet group. You know, obviously, yep. I've, Kay's been my teammate before. Mike's been my teammate before. You know, it's my first time uh, rocking with Mudge, obviously. Uh, Hicks when he gets back from injury. So it's a vet group of guys that know exactly what to expect from each other. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everybody individually has their own thing, but as a unit, we're, we're really solid. So we just pride ourselves in, you know, no sacks is as least uh, many hits as possible on Tommy because the more he's up and the cleaner he is, the better you can see the receivers down the field, the more touchdowns he throws. Grady did say the offensive line is often a problem in the huddle when trying to communicate the play. <laughs> Who's the biggest offender of maybe interfering with it's that? It's uh, 100% me. I'm, I'm, I mess with him all the time, especially in practice in the games. You know, he might be a little too loud. You know, I know the crowd is loud on the roads, but I'm just like, I'm always messing with Tommy. He's always smacking me or, or yelling at me to be quiet or something like that. So I, I, like, I like messing with my guys. My guess is sometimes you're singing in the huddle, and later on this season, I think you'll be featured as part of a singing competition um, with the Albany Empire. You guys mm -hmm. have some good singers. A few. So stay a few, tuned for that. Yeah. Mo, good luck the rest of this way. Keep that body healthy, yes, man. Sir. Keep those wins piling up. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. That you. is Albany Empire. Offensive lineman slash wide receiver Mo Ruffins. For a game day forecast for that block party, we throw it to our meteorologist, Paul Kayano. Paulie. Thanks, Chris. The weather is shaping up fantastic for Saturday. The block party kicking off at 1230, and it looks like it's going to be a beauty with lots of sunshine, humidity, a little bit of that, but what you might expect for June, upper 70s for afternoon highs and a dry afternoon. So outside the Times Union Center on South Pearl Street, you get involved with some food and drinks and game time at 330, so plenty of time to warm up for the game against the Atlantic City Blackjacks. Chris. Thanks, Paul. When we come back, Coach Keith rejoins Roger with a complete scouting report on those blackjacks and a look at the standings. That's next on the Albany Empire Express right here on My Four. I'm Roger Wyland. Welcome back to the Albany Empire Express. It's a rematch with Atlantic City today at 3.30. A team the Empire will not take lightly. Overall, great team. You know, they got a lot of great vet veteran talent. You know, a lot of guys coming in. You know, Randy Hippert, all those great guys. Kendrick Ings, a lot of playmakers. So, uh, you know, we're going to dive into our game plan this week and uh, handle it as such. And like I said, the mentality is one to know every week, and it's going to be the mentality for the rest of the season. They got uh, three three guys in the secondary that played a lot, a lot of football, and uh, their front their front's good. So I think their, their quarterback got injured last week, but I'm uh, pretty sure he'll play this week. But uh, you know, they got a good team. They can they can come here and beat us. So we got to be ready and be ready to execute on offense. And as Coach Keith will tell you, they've been down a bunch here, Albany Empire at halftime, so don't want that to happen today. If you're not going to the game, you can always watch it right here on my four. Kickoff today is at 3.30. Let's take a look at the standings, Coach, here, and it's a similar theme. You guys are still on top, and this is actually a big game uh, today for Atlantic City, sitting at 3-5. and five. Yeah, and we have to extend our lead. Obviously, we want to get to 8-1. and one. Like Malachi said, the goal is 1-0 and oh every single week. But with Atlantic City coming in, they realize, hey, if we, if we beat them, 
they're going to be pushed down. This is this is desperation time for them. So we're going to get their best. We got to make sure we are full force and understanding and respecting Atlantic City, so we don't get caught slipping here. We have to make sure that we're just really respectful, playing our game, take care of the football, get off the field on fourth downs when we're on defense. Be smart on special teams. They have a really good uh, extra point field goal kicker. They can kick a lot of onside kicks. We just got to take care of the football and play our game. Coach, get off to a good start today and go get the W. Awesome. Thank you, good sir. Good seeing you. Thank good you, Coach. You. Keep with us, and that will do it for this week's show for Chris Honorado and Ashley Miller. I'm Roger Wyman. So long, everyone. And we'll see you next week for another edition of Albany Empire Express. So long.